We're here in Monte Carlo for the Rendezvous de Septembre for AMBEST TV. I'm Richard Banks. And I'm joined now by Bill Peroni, who's President and CEO of Accord. Bill, welcome. Thank you, Richard. Great to see you back here in Monte Carlo. Absolutely. You've been coming here for, for a long time. You've got a deep knowledge of the reinsurance industry, a lot of talk about where we are in the cycle. What's your perception? Well, I think that uh, the entire event recognizes the fact that we're, we're in a hard cycle and we'll certainly continue it at least for the next year. Um, interestingly, um, it's not due to some of the historical reasons, large cats, uh, precipitous fall in the capital markets, but primarily due to the increase in fixed income, so uh, unrealized investment losses, coupled with some of those secondary perils. So I'm, I'm reminded of Tolstoy's uh, all unhappy families are uh, uh, unhappy in their own unique and special way. Um, hardening cycles make some stakeholders in our industry unhappy. So this one is truly unique, right? As you look since World War II on, we've had several cycles all precipitated by uh, CAD events and uh, macroeconomic shocks, but not this one. Certainly you have inflation and interest rate, but it's, I think it's fairly unique here. Normally in the hard market, you expect to see uh, waves of new capital coming in. We're not seeing that not, now, why? No, and I don't think we are going to, again, because the capital depletion is, is somewhat temporary, and there's that profound difference, as AM Best has noted, between um, deployed capital and available capital. Capital's fine, right? It's just, um, and, and I know there's a big talk about the uh, gap here. Well, the gap is a function of, I think, a customer's willingness to pay for the cover and for a reinsurer's willingness uh, to be paid that amount. So I think with a pricing fix, the capacity is here. And I can't imagine that there's a lot of new capital wanting to take on, let's say, property risk in some of the coastal states in the United States. I'm sure they're welcome to it. I just can't believe that there's capital pursuing those types of opportunities. Let's talk a little bit about how reinsurers do business. Uh, you, you can conduct a, a digital ma a maturity study. Tell us a bit about the latest findings that you've seen there. So we've been doing the study for seven years um, in looking at levels of digital maturity for the top carriers globally. And there's five categories. It starts with digital laggards at the lower rung and it goes all the way to digital competitors. And interestingly, prior to COVID, the digital laggards fared okay, certainly growing less, uh, less uh, profitability, higher combined ratios, and lower free cash flow. But what we've seen post-COVID is a dramatic acceleration of the gap between the highest levels of digital maturity and the lower performers. Better total shoulder returns, far superior combined ratios, and consequently free cash flow. Now, interestingly enough, reinsurers historically have invested a great deal, and I just don't mean money, although certainly they've invested in it, but also talent and management attention. And when you look at the upper rungs of digital maturity, reinsurers are twice as likely to be in those categories than primary carriers. So I think uh, reinsurers were extremely well positioned pre-COVID, post-COVID as well. And now I think that digitization is becoming increasingly important source of uh, competition. They're really doing well here. Bill, I'm going to ask you to get your crystal ball out. Tell us a little bit about how technology is going to help the industry develop over the next five or 10 years. So I know that there's a, a great deal of conversation around AI, and I know this our industry has been inundated over the last several years with uh, certain technologies which will go nameless. I will tell you though, AI is going to have a profound transformative change in our industry. Now, change in our industry occurs just slowly enough that you could ignore it. So five years is a relatively short period of time, but I think even five years in our industry, you're going to see narrow AI as well as general AI begin to improve efficiency effectiveness, but very quickly within five years, I think, really change the value proposition and that gap that I spoke about between uh, lower levels of digital maturity and higher levels, it's gonna be very hard for for those carriers with high levels of technical debt, right, to actually use AI. And technical debt's a bit pernicious because if you systematically underinvest in IT, it's a benefit to the statement of cash flows you didn't invest. It's a, 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 a liability that doesn't show up on the balance sheet. But there tends to be a moment of truth with that underinvestment. And COVID was such an inflection point, and I think. Um, uh, AI is going to be another point that many carriers are going to have a very difficult time deploying that technology given the accumulated debt. So I would say that uh, we're in for a very exciting time in our industry and this technology is going to have a transformational impact.
Bill, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you, Richard. For Invest TV, I'm Richard Banks.